Here comes King Colorado bursting through. King Colorado, Miracle of Love on the outside. Running home well as Tannhauser Miss Jolene, but King Colorado's in front near the line, and King Colorado's won. Welcome to Beth Doctor Behind the Curtain. Look at how pro punters operate. I'm your host, Scoot. I'm joined in studio by John Walter. It's chilly up here this morning. When are we get, 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 get uh, uh, when are we going to get some pro punters on so we can have a look at what they do behind the scenes? T t t t today. I got t t t Tourette's. Hey, I got t t t Tourette's. Your master punter. You just threw out King Colorado at seventies on Friday. I like that. I think that I think that's a pro bet. Seventies. That's a fair effort. Hat tip. Run me through seventies. Obviously chipped away. Send it out to everyone. Blow to nineties. What's, go, what's the go? The traders, they, they're trying what's to thumb the their nose at you. And the I worked, I didn't find out till after the race. The fellow I went to school with, he's got that winning edge thing or whatever it is, and he, oh, yeah. he owns or part owns it. And, and he sent it out to all these people as well. Yeah. So I'd love to have seen Ladbroke's hold on King Colorado, but bless his little heart. Mm, they seem to be sticking out a lot on a couple of horses or just taking a bit of an opinion. So hope, hopefully that lasts. Well, they were $18. Finish price when it SP twelve dollars. Twelve dollars was the next best corporate, and they were still eighteen. So I didn't like it. Yeah, but they I'd, had it to lay. Geez, they must be holding some cash. I wish they'd have that opinion on a race where they bet you to win more than eight dollars sixty, um, like that that race there. It was nice, but um, mm. I think we I'd had like one of them a month between all the boys on the show, including Donnie. I think we had the first four across the line. It paid seventeen and a half thousand. So King Colorado Miracle Love Tanhazer and Miss Jolene. No, I didn't take it. Did you take it? First no, one. but someone, one of the boys took the Cornell of the fix the day before when they were 80s and oh, yeah. tw- 14s or something, the first two. Crikey. I don't know. I don't, don't remember what the easy, dividend was. Such an easy caper, these. In, easy in the caper. rearview mirror, isn't it? Mm. DK, how are you? Uh, oh, yeah, well, yeah, it's only, yeah, but Nico, talk, talk, don't worry about me. It's Nico's world. We're all just existing. He's, he's, he's beach balling the, the joint. Nico, how are you going? No, we're uh, yes, up- yesterday brought us back to earth. Oh, did it? Oh. It was just a torturous day out at Soundown. A couple of narrow defeats there. Narrow defeats, a couple of seconds at big odds. Still seen them okay, but just didn't wasn't our luck yesterday. Yeah. Not the rub of the green there. So uh, we're hoping to bounce back at Flemo for the subs. Big Stoops. difference when you've seen them and they you collect to when you've seen them and they get nutted, isn't there? There's a big difference. Yes, yeah, yeah, so there's not a big difference, but there's a big. Difference. <laughs> Nico, you're seeing them like beach balls. I, I wouldn't change your approach at all. You're absolutely airborne, especially this time of year. Some of the horses you're finding are phenomenal. Last week was uh, pretty – well, it's a Queensland racing show, as DK says. Antino was super. Think about it. Herculean just keeps getting the job done. They go fast, they go slow. It doesn't matter. He just gets the job done. Mm-hmm. thought Timmy was a bit – Timmy Timmy Clark on Converge. Jeez. Oh, he said on Round of the Gates it wasn't the same horse. He said he got half squash coming out, but it just wouldn't go, and it still only got beat. Three or four, he said, like it went huge, even though it was just never in the race. Just, yeah, he just never showed up the horse, yeah. and he said the same about a couple others there. And so at this, I don't know what the go was, but um, he wasn't he wasn't himself. Ruthless Dame was uh, huge without a fight as a uh, horse uh, was pretty good. What were you going to say, DK? You chime in, you found something? No, pretty good. Oh, uh-huh. pretty good. Jeez, what? better than pretty good, wasn't it? Like it, it, it's got to be favourite for Cox Plate, Caulfield Cup, everything now, hasn't it? I suppose that's what happens. Well, there's nothing else there. What, who's going to be other favourite? The, the thing that won the bloody derby, cracking jokes, that up, that up against it. But Kovalika. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, they back fame off the map. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's really, where did fame run? No, did it do anything? No. Yeah. We're trying to put without a fight up against uh, Kovalika on a dry track. Good luck. Anyway, it was great racing on uh, Queensland's uh, feature day. It's good to see uh, racing going well up here. Uh, Wurrimu Pin, there's been a bit of talk about him. Uh, three kilos to two kilos. Why bother? It's a bit of a laugh, isn't it? How do they muck it up, though? Hasn't he ridden like 6,300 winners or something? Yeah. No, well, it's good that everyone's tuned in. And Celine Gordre, she's on fire, isn't she, Nico? Yeah, couldn't punch home Vasilia for us yesterday. Um, <laughs> but, you know, she's going well in races where to find her. Scoot, Sandra <laughs> Sully. Sandra Sully. What? Scoot, late mail. Late news. What's that? Spoken about Celine Gaudry the last bloody six months, haven't we, Nico? Yeah, she's she's been airborne for a while, but uh, yeah, W Pin as well. Um, markets in love with him, aren't they, DK? I suppose he doesn't ride that much in the bush, but um, gee, he's just getting stacks of rides in Melbourne, and they've been in love with him since day one. And I think he could he could probably claim nothing, and they'd still be all over him. So uh, two kilos is still a big positive there. A deep strike last week. They're up up the up the up, up the, the fence, fence on deep strike, and no weight knocking off Normanby Bridge. Unreal, yep. unreal. Puke. Absolute yeah, picture. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just winding you boys up about WPIN and Gordray. Oh. And uh, C. Heffel's another one. 
No, oh, Nico's Nico's all over him. He's the first man all over all these these jockeys. I was just trying to get a get a bit of a rise from you guys, and it's working. I'll keep sticking the boots in here. Uh, Bookie's wanting bank statements for payments sub a thousand dollars. I saw one pop up for eight hundred dollars, um, and then Ben Grace tweeted out something that um, Unibet's now turned into a uh, bit of a bank statement uh, operation as well. I think this is ludicrous behaviour for oh, the amounts. One thing, but uh, you know, Bet Choice and Cold Tidy used to have a. Well, it they used just to be one of the top four. Bookies. It's irrelevant. It's not the money. Huh? You can't be saying proof that you can afford to do this over a two hundred dollar deposit. Yeah, and let, like unless you know the person's like you've seen them at the front of Centrelink or something like how how it just shows that it's a tactic. It's it's, it's completely irrelevant to what they what these rules are supposed to be in place for, which is protection of the punter, not the bookmaker. Yeah, and then they're just yeah. Well, what did they? That was that was crazy. The fellow where it says, "Oh, we've looked at the other deposits to other, and you've had a deposit with Betfair." So now here's your money back. Exactly. And what so like, the heck? For example, if, uh, you know, for, for example, uh, we've had the streams and let's say I, I'd been betting. Let's say John McLeod paid for dinner, which I, I got him for that when we yeah, had the stream. Yeah, one time. We did, yeah, we got, I got him, him for yeah. a couple of thousand yeah. Yeah. to pay for dinner. So let's say I I just squared him up and deposited 400 or $500 out of my bank account and I submitted that. Everyone would think that we're in cahoots and we're betting together or that's the assumption that the bookmaker could come and say, which – I've got nothing to do with John McLeod's betting, no, you but that's, have, the par- that's the line you could draw. Or-, or you could be signed up to bigblackdongers.com. Or something. It doesn't make any difference, and and, it, and there is no privacy amongst thieves, and that's exactly what um, no code amongst thieves. There's no privacy amongst thieves either. These guys share everything. Uh, I, I Like you say, for argument's sake, just use his name because he's on the other side. Like, see, DK would have, you know, his, his average bet's 200. DK's at 1,000 on this thing at, at, uh, at wherever. Everyone in Australia would know within 15 minutes of that bet being placed. Um, and do you think it's any different with if something came up strange in a in a person of interest? It's just mm. it's just blatant that they're not using it for what it is intended, and they they design these rules ch- purely for protection and to upset and antagonate uh, antagonise people, agitate people that they don't want as clients, and they don't use it um, in in the spirit of of how they were formed and and yeah, it's just but it's just blatant like it's just, these are the things that drive people like me crazy just because why is not someone why just not someone see what it is for what it is and hold them accountable exactly there's half a dozen bookies at, out there at the moment the small some smaller operators but they uh, they're growing at a rapid rate and I'm not confident enough that they'd return my money based on things that have happened to me or things that have happened to some of you guys and all this stuff about the bank statements, which is bad because the good blokes and the decent bookmakers have to cop all the smart money and all the bets that they don't really want, whereas you're too scared to bet the horse at all the As rubby they joints. Mm. And they, they're the ones that should be, if they put the price up, they should have to wear the liability as well. DK, I, I think this would uh, put a rocket under your bum, this this behaviour, wouldn't it? It would, it would, but I've made a point of, I mean, of avoiding. I mean, you, if you don't want the issues, you don't open accounts with any of those joints, you know. Um, you stick to the top 20 or whatever they are. I know there's 100 out there, but, I mean, why would you bet with any betmaker's joints when they share every bit of information? You bet with one and the other 30 Agreed. joints get all the information. As you said, no privacy amongst thieves. You've got these cowboy ones, this eight or ten complete nut of cowboys have got history of doing this stuff under other brands and then you go and open an account under one of their new brands and you're just hoping it stuff happens. So I deliberately, you know, try not to – I try to avoid them. There's, you know, there's enough boogies to get on with. But the problem is they write their own terms and conditions, right? They, they, write, their, they write their own terms and conditions. There's not a blanket terms and conditions amongst all boogies. They write them to suit themselves. So when this stuff comes up, they say, oh, no, it's in the T's and C's. I mean, it's just outrageous. Outrageous. I mean, I know. You know the, the what about the ones that charge you two hundred to investigate? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's in their terms and conditions. <laughs> they write it in there. Well, put in their terms and conditions. Charge them two hundred to uh, do that, and then yeah. Oh, it's, 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 it's outrageous. Like I was just thinking, like I had a look. I said, how far is the game cast in that sense? In two thousand and three, I was working in the betting ring at Caulfield's or at Metropolitan Traces, going every day. Blokes having thousands on things, couldn't move in the betting ring. Huge. 2013, it was still all right. It was my first year punting out of my own. Videos were just public. They were the heydays. You'd get on big with a the tab. There's no bots shooting down the prices. You could run down and back them yourselves, get on. And now 10 years later, how, this is where we're at. I mean... Where's it going? Well, that's it. It's and how rapidly is it accelerating? That's it. You have 100 on something at 10s. They say, oh, you're in collusion or whatever. 
Uh, they investigate it. You now owe them a hundred. Then you get back to ten to one winner. Oh, it's just it's, it's just crazy. But PRAs, the amount of admin <laughs> to go across these, let's call it fifty or sixty or seventy bookies, that would be so much work. But if they were harder and faster on shutting these grubs down and just saying, all right, as soon as you pull this. Um, grubby behaviour, well, your licence is suspended until you pay out this customer. Like, uh, I tell you what, they'd pull their socks up quick smart and it'd be better for everyone and then you figure out who the real bookies are and who are not. Like, I've got a massive problem with a grubby bookmaker that's not taking any of the sharp money and the next thing you know, they pop up and they're in the top ten bookmakers and, uh, you know. What I'll, makes it worse is that one of that grubby bookmaker is four bookmakers. They're actually like they've well, got they've four. Well, they've got multiple licenses. Yeah. yeah. So the, the 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 grubby bookmaker, you think, oh, well, I I'll, I'll, won't go to him. I'll go to the one next door. It's the same guy. Mm. And, re, um, and reiterate why they want new brands. You know, brands only keep opening a new 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 brand every six months. I oh, saw nothing. One just appeared on my speed last night. Yeah, for the, for the, for the, for the, for the sugar rush of the problem gamblers, you know. Well, that's Just right. Case. What can be the justification that the yeah. exact same licensee needs more than one skin? Well, exactly, and that's yeah, it's, it's to stay under the or threshold. Energy. So yeah, they're outrageous. just creating all these problems with these minuscule bookies, but then genuine products like Top Sport and Betfair, they, they just need a different taxation system. To and they're the guys that are the fairest operators. So, like, wake up, PRAs. Like, it's, it's exactly. honestly it's, they're two different things. But you're right. The the, the exchange is not a not a weight uh, license. It's not a weight, whatever they call them, service provider or whatever. It's not. It's an exchange. That, so it has to be treated separately and agree. Anyone who wants to be Have aggressive with their betting needs to be tiered f- however they work it out, whether it be market percentage, MBL, that they're, they're happy to abide by, whatever it is, they need to be tiered. I agree. Mm. The upside is this. The, when's, when's, the perp, when's the inquiry stuff results come? That's got to be to the end of, oh, end of July or something, isn't it? I think it's due, the, 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 the Senate inquiry and stuff like that. So... And then there's going to be the big clamp down on the on the advertising, and um, I mean there's there's things in motion, not on this side of things, but surely, like stuff like this, the people complaining and tagging Peter Janning and that, and the Matt Welsh was tagged. I mean, you couldn't miss what that this this thing that Richard and everything retweeted the other night. So surely, if you see that, you must anyone who looks at that say that's completely outrageous. Exactly, you know? so it's got to change. Well, bookies and PREs see the problem, so they've created the the um, the free bet mess. So they they need to fix it. It's not the customer's fault for just picking up the promotion and getting hounded by all the ads that follow you all across um, the internet. I'd, I'd ask this: Who do you think's drunk more drunk on, on on bonus bets? Is it the PREs? Is it the bookies? Or is it the customer? Tell you what, it'd be an absolute photo finish. It'd be nearly a dead heat all through. Well, the PREs didn't care until they became taxable. Well, that's right. That's the, that's the good thing. At least they're taxing them on it now. Well, good or bad, not, I'm not, not sure. But uh, the problem is, good, good is uh, for the revenue. Bad is that now that it's that the PRAs rely upon it, and they're happy with that. They'll allow the well, whatever you want to call it, the, the the system that they've got in place. So, you know that they can they can incentivize whoever they want and, and cast the rest aside, and and they seem to side with them on just about every occasion in in exchange for the for the revenue they they get from it. So. I don't know. I'd rather see them all gone. Free bets, incentives gone. I, I'd rather see a couple of these uh, grubby book, bookmakers uh, wiped out. I'm going to put my uh, my white hat on, the sign of peace, and make this a positive racing show. Enough of the politics, and we'll skip on to today's show. I've got uh, Paulie from Fat Pizza uh, in the. Uh... <laughs> Looks more like angry ants. <laughs> he's, 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 he's in there ready to roll. So let's get on with things. Today's show is going to be a beauty. Uh, Donnie, he's in training for the Gold Coast Marathon. I asked him out for lunch in, like, next week and he, uh, he's not having it. So he might be in his uh, white sho- shoes. What about belt. the beaver, mate? He might be going Six months of switch. getting himself ready for the Gold Coast Marathon, the beaver, the greatest man <laughs> in our chat room. He forgets to buy a ticket and they sell out. No way. Are you serious? He hasn't got a ticket to run in the race that he's been training six months for. That's pretty Didn't good. Didn't register. That's pretty good. I'm trying to get him a ticket out wide, but that's pretty good. Didn't register and, <laughs> and didn't like register. Like a marathon, you put yourself through 600 hours of pain and you forget to buy a ticket. Wait, that's the best ever. Yeah. It's a sign. Yeah. He should take it as a sign. Go the he's probably saved himself a heart attack from uh, going in the race. <laughs> Well, you're a, uh, a one-bet wonder at the moment. Osmosis kicked us all off. Uh, would have been plenty of multi-madness last week. Uh, Rose Hill, Mikel Cup was a big day for Bjorn, wasn't it? Yeah, five winners, hey? I think. Um, Go yeah, on. I was I was on Battleton in the last each uh, for my result, and I, <laughs> that it was, but I knew I was in trouble when he was going for number six, but it loomed up as well. But, uh, yeah, it's good to see him up and about. The, the game's better when 
people like him and you know Gary Moore when he was here. It's great to see those guys train winners because the personality sort of shines through, doesn't it? Whereas others, you just they go through. By the, there's no, there's just nothing. Like, you know, like they can train ten winners and you you get nothing from them. At least Bjorn's up and about. Yeah, exactly. It's good to see. Speaking up and about, we've already mentioned Nico and I think uh, the assault from Malta tune into this one as well. Extra two was sort of around 390 into evens. It was an absolute press and uh, didn't it uh, trot up. Got Flemington this week and Nico's keen on a couple of uh, Linda Linda horses. Uh as I said, uh, Paulie, a.k.a. Azza, will join us. He's got one at uh, Friday, and then he's uh, going to have a look at the EP eyeliner. The Top Sport Steam has finally hit the board, took the wrong price. King Colorado was a beautiful lay, $26. SP was still 14 so a uh, little bit of a, uh, a cap tip there, but 526 was still a good bet there, so someone's had uh, good value. I was just about to rebrand the uh, the Top Sport Steam as the Top Sport Lays, and sure as heck. Home it goes. It was funny because when we did the show, I hadn't done the race properly. As we sort of said, I remember chiming into you at about one o'clock that afternoon, and then I didn't even remember the steamer. But when it came up, I was like, Yeah, I'm not really familiar with this horse too much, but not knocking anything at 26. And then Deep two hours later, I'm I'm in the cupboard. It's quite funny. Walty sent me a message and said, Mate, I think this horse can win. Mm. Could piss him. Could and then it was 26, in, yeah. and then like about three hours later, it's 81. I'm like, Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I said, oh, don't worry about it. It's on the drift. <laughs> yeah, like, don't worry <laughs> got, about the drift. You've got plenty of time to back it. Yeah, anyway, shit, anyway. That's, that's pretty funny. But uh, Bob is uh, back on all of the Group 1 Queensland races, so there's only one to go. So it's the Tats Tiara. Uh, so I think uh, Ruthless Dame looks probably the horse to beat there, I would have thought. Don't know about Opal Ridge running a strong uh, 1,400 myself, but um, I guess we'll cover that uh, on next week's show. Uh, without further ado, the bloke was all over the strati. He liked thinking about it, thought it was too short. Converge he liked, and uh, Ruthless Dame was the other one who ran super. And it's time to welcome Jason as a party to show this Alter from Malta. It sounds like Darren Lockie, actually. Thanks, Scoot. Um, hatless this week. The hat is off in honour of the great man, John Walter. Um, honestly, absolutely just pretty much declaring an $81 Group 1 winner. And uh, said he rated at 10s. Jumps 12s and absolutely never looked like losing. Um, so I did the responsible thing with the winnings and uh, didn't pay off the mortgage. I bought a horse. So, uh, yeah, got that, <laughs> bought a tried horse from New Zealand. Uh, it's a maiden, one start maiden. And then an absolute spud on its first start. Got it for 100. It's <laughs> oh. shit. Getting shipped over next week and uh, going straight to Anthony and Sam Friedman. I'm pumped. Is that you, Luke Murrell? Is that <laughs> you, Luke, you Murrell? Luke Murrell? <laughs> oh God, he's a good bloke, isn't he? I think I think you used more stern words than Spud. I think I think Spud was very tame. <laughs> anyway. Oh no, it's just like you know, just no. He like, said Spud ducky. ducky. He said I Spud know. ducky. Yeah, no, no, no. I just think it, it's got improvement in it. That's all I'm saying. So, looking forward to that arriving on shore. And thank you to the great man, John Walter. Honestly. Right. Racing watch. If you're, not, if you're not subscribed, you're an idiot. <laughs> I love this. I'm lapping it up. Oh, you it's should. Great, yeah. How often do you how yeah. often do you tip eighty one dollar winners in group <sighs> ones and they salute? Mate, that is genius. Well done, buddy. We'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take I'm it. lucky he's not in the studio with him. Well, you get a wristy <laughs> under the table. <laughs> oh, no, I wouldn't do that with a ranger. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, Nico's buying weanlings as is shipping them in from Zealand. Unbelievable. Huh? unbelievable. Yeah, good. These guys going. Good. I can barely afford a plane to get to Melbourne. That's how bad I'm going. Uh, as a, it's Ipswich uh, Cup Day on Saturday, we're going to have a look at uh, the market there and a replay out of the eyeliner. But uh, the, you think you found one out of the trials? It's this is you're just stepping on DK's toes. So I like the uh, bit of niggle here. We're going to go to Geelong on Friday in race two, and um, the horse here is uh, in the trial. It's in the yellow. It's called yeah. Knockbar. When I yeah. Google Knockbar. I get the United Arab Emirates, so I don't know what that uh, word means, but uh, tell us why you like the horse in the trial. So this is a beautifully bred mare. Oh, I'm invincible out of uh, Tortine. Uh, out of Tortine, she's a black tight winner. Um, look, they, they they jumped this thing out in October and it went okay. They put it away, gave it some time, jumped out um, at Bendigo, and he was absolutely swinging off it. Second of that was a horse called Allocate, who went to the Swan Hill Carnival and ran a decent second. Third was 2J, who's won about six races. So no camels behind it. And then went to Maui, and um, Miss Take was absolutely under the you know, uh, under the pump, and it's just absolutely pissed in by six. Miss Take's run fourth in a black type race in New Zealand at a second start. Um, I'm not sure if the times are right out of this trial, but it's, if it is, um, it's a Group One horse. At the very least, I think this is a black type horse. 
Um, it is going to go to Geelong tomorrow and absolutely smack them. It's about two dollars twenty. Um, as I said, this horse has got amazing quality. Um, second favourite's Kingwell. It ran behind that Exodus A last start, who ran like a busted the other day, and it's twelve hundred back to eleven. I can't have it. Um, Hawks have got one in it that's jumped out okay, better than it has previous preps, but it's had four starts in a race and not run a drum. So really keen this and absolutely unloaded. Um, actually really excited about watching this race on Friday. I think this is a really smart man. DK, this is your territory, Maiden. No, I thought the other one trolled better. <gasps> Prince, head, Prince head, the Warner, the Warner, the Warner, the Warner oh, horse or something. I just, I just I'll, 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 I'll be watching John it. Think, oh, hey, this, it. Go and watch its trolls. As soon as they squeeze it, it just wants to take off. Should Warnable, see it. Warnable synthetic, and it's against some camels. I, I looked at those, but uh, oh, mate, allocate, allocates no, allocates a camel. I'm telling you, it, it was a hack race, dingo race at Swan Hill the other day. Allocate, it's no star. Just going to be allocating the trial. What about mistake? I wouldn't Around be reading much into those, those those Moey trials. River Plate won one by eighteen links. Well, I wouldn't yeah, be reading much and into that. Sand down on Wednesday. Well, yeah, so that one's wins a midweek off an eighteen link trial, like. No, I'm no, sorry. Oh, oh, Jay, Jay Allen. On us. I don't want you to have a heart attack on us. <laughs> Jay, Jay, Jay Allen, this thing, this thing. Go and watch the way they squeeze it. They're not trying to troll it up like they're trolling that thing up. Like I'll you said, it. it's well bred. Like, I'm invincible, cost 250000 to go to, and this only sold for 250000 So it mustn't be much, much, much of a type. So. The Prince Sonic, every time they squeeze it, they're not trying to shut up. They squeeze it. All it wants to do is take off. So I reckon it'll give it a race. Well, it's 30 months since they bought it for 250000 given it's a four-year-old mare. So I think it could have... Well, rise, it hey, you're being kind. It's, so, it's, a, it's, a, it's a rising five-year-old mare. Having its first start must have had problems. Well, we'll see tomorrow. Get on. The more you bet, the more you win. <laughs> the world will never get to see Connor reverse Khabib again, but we'll get to see <laughs> DK versus a, as of tomorrow. At, uh, <laughs> I thought he was about the pole of the casket, man. He went already up fired up. I was a bit worried about the big fella. Hey, well, I'll tell you what. I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to do for the next the next spring streams. I think for the first hour, we play the first race in Sydney because they always go off early. And then I think for 30 minutes, we'll put these two in in the UFC cap. What's it, don't they have a day where they have all maidens? Huh? Isn't there a isn't there a day at Flemington uh, where they do all maidens? I or is that was that all down the straight or something? No, I respect DK's opinion greatly, and I saw what he saw with that Prince Sonic. But I think this horse is no, something special. I, yeah, and the market, the markets, the markets generally better with first starters than I am. So uh, one's evens and one's eight bucks or nine bucks in it. So. Who's Mark O'Donnell anyway? Simon's cousin. It's just yeah, just yeah, just got a couple of rebellious lords. One of his and old. Uh, oh, yeah, rebellious lord. The synth. Oh, that's one. right. Yeah, he's a D- DK wee man. So he's he's he's. Oh, he's is he? Yeah, oh, yeah old lieutenant right there. So um, he's trained one winner at his life in Ar- at Ararat. That was rebellious lord. Rebellious yeah. lord. Oh no, sorry. Trained, he's had t- rebellious lords one two for him. Sorry, three. Oh, he won an Avoca too. I am. Um, I'm, a, I'm a half winding you up, but uh, that, your horse looks very hard to beat. But I, I did like the try. I said, well, it looks like the first starters because that Kingwell's out. It doesn't look much chop, and no. nor does the other thing. So I thought I'll oh, yeah, the one that the, I like the try. I like the way it tried. I, I like when they don't. But some people like when they trial them up and win by four links. I like it when they trial quietly, just under a little. So I want to see what they do when they give it a squeeze. All right, that's all we've got time for this week. <laughs> 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 that's right. That's we can like swing a this USA around. Way, we huh? can swing we this around from the DK and as a show uh, to the DK and as a show, not the Queensland Racing Show. That's what we're going to do now. That's the go. We need that Dana. What's his name? Dana. Dana to, to stand Dana between White. him. Yeah, Dana White. <laughs> that was awesome. It was very good. All right, it is now time to switch back to the Queensland Racing Show. We'll uh, have a quick look at uh, the Ipswich Cup market only. I'm sure. A couple of us have um, had a brief look. Uh, I think that's all you need to <laughs> take with this car, this race. Mate, if you get and if you bag a winner at Ipswich, you should get double. This should be a, this way, like free bet bonuses. You double should get double. Double boosted odds. Mm. Ipswich race seven. Numerian Annabelle just can't help herself. Three dollars fifty here. Desert Icon four forty. Berberdeck has been off the map. Seven into five fifty. I saw better. I saw nine or ten early in the week. I haven't touched it. Uh, Cedar Pout nine out to twelve. Dark Destroyer thirteen. Uh, Otair, Oitar, $20. Russo, 20 Zadig, 21 London Banker, 26 Irish Playboy, 26 And uh, a couple other horses out of the gate there. Numerian is an interesting one. 61 kilos, 4 kilos to Desert Icon. Berberdeck, 55 and a half. Uh, Cedar Power, 54 and a half. Is there anything that can beat Numerian down in the weights? Uh, off your first thoughts there, Azza. Oh, I I mean, I absolutely hate the race, to be honest. I couldn't back Numerian. Um, you know, I, I did back it in the Australian Cup, but just just get a bit of a nicky feeling with 61 around a tight track. 
um, with it. But then I couldn't really find anything. I've been I've been following Desert Icon, but you know, it was, I don't know if it was flat enough the other day off a really slow speed. I mean, back in Russo in rubbish races, I might have a sanity bet on it. It ran like a donkey the other day. I just, it's like I don't want to back anything to be honest. In this, it's just um, I just found it really impossible to decipher. I just hope Zadig just leads all the way with the apprentice for Curry and just bolts him. <laughs> Try to horse sale from gate fourteen, just lets rip and keeps running. Depends which event you've <laughs> been there this week, I guess. De- De- Desert Icon extremely well set up. For, to like twenty four hundred. I don't think it's go back to twenty one fifty inside gate around here. You can see it poking around. Birdebeck's dead set going to be coming via the bloody snack bar around the turn there, and it take big set of nuts to back any horse from back and wider. And oh, it's yeah. Fraught with danger. Yeah, I thought um, it's absolute D day for Dark Destroyer. D- Desert Icon, I could sort of see an angle there. Burbedek, I agree with your thoughts. Cedar Power looks like it's in the race. I'd be looking at Annabelle's other two. Numerian, 61 kilos. He doesn't have a rider. Yeah, it's weird. On isn't the it? quick back up, and the other two both get the blinkers on. Uh, mm. I'd be lo- having a good look at them. Obviously, helps their weight situation as well, mm. being in the race. Mm. No rider. Maybe he's not running. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. two at forty stands. Uh, follow me, dear. So, Regal Lions run well second up in in Melbourne. Actually, jumped out the ground and on a similar trip. Maybe it, it's got ability, but God, I compress the weight. That Isn't that a Waller trick? They're forties. Compress, compress the, the weight scale. Just chuck. What he doesn't have any tricks, mate. Straight down the line, Chris. Don't try and grey up, Chris. <laughs> Next thing you'll be greying up Richie Callender and all these other sort of. Upstanding citizens, don't grey up, Chris. This show might get banned from YouTube. No, it, it's not news limited. Hey, it's not news limited. This is this this show is exactly why we're not on. We might or we might get have to get Ray Thomas in as our host. <laughs> that we may be forced to get Big Ray in. <laughs> you can't put you can't put Waller in the Richie Callum category. Come on, come on. He does his. They're best mates. What are you talking about? Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> they can't. Uh, they are. Are they? Yes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, wait, Where have I you been living? I can't. I can't. Oh, well, I, I don't tune into the. I don't live on Twitter like you do. I, I don't, I don't Man, follow anyone or anything. I just talk to I friends. could. And I, this is only from what I'm told because I'm certainly not close to the camp anymore. Uh, I believe he does his form and mapping for him and tactics. Hey? He could. Oh, must be new. Free donuts <laughs> or something. That can't be happening. That's me. Oh, that's crap. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that makes sense why Godolphin and Seymour are just going to go straight past and give them absolute wind burn if they're not already passing. You'd get passing. an earn out of that if that was true. I believe so. He couldn't be getting paid to do that. The boy, I can't, honestly. And, and, and he couldn't be allowed to bet. No. <laughs> Scary. Scary. Next. Oh. This episode may not make the light of day. I tell you what, this is a very. Or, or good. We, we could be like Jay Monaghan, mate. We could go missing after this. Have <laughs> we, we get, started uh, recording yet? Just checking. <laughs> oh, <it's, laughs> <it's, it's, laughs> oh, it could be a Hillary Clinton jobby. We may never be seen ever again. Um, the Ipswich daughter. Eyeliner. I, I don't, I'm not sure if we found the winner of the Ipswich Cup there, but uh, I think Nico's probably read it the best there. It could be a little yeah. bit of a uh, compressed weight jobby jobby. I so, think that's the go. Do- 40 to 1's the, the, about the lowest odds they'll be taking in the field. I think Nico's dead set. At least he's got an angle. Yeah, it's terrific, isn't it? Speaking of another good race, the Ipswich Eyeliner. Uh, Blazer Trail's favourite here, 480. Uh, there's the uh, the good horse got scratched here, didn't it? Uh, far too easy got scratched. So the yeah, flux um, aren't a bit of a fake news there. So uh, it's not a market move. So 480 Blazer Trail, Cepheus uh, $6, Gravina 7 Legal Spree 850 Holyfield 9 $10, Lady of Honor, Irish Songs 15 Profit 15 Paladas 19 15 Rounds $20. Uh, You've spent Warwick. more time reading this out than a human should spend on the race. <laughs> Lady of Honor's drawn the car park here, Barry 19, but uh, Azza wants us to have a look at the replay of it in the uh, BRC Sprint that's in the navy blue. Yeah, it's in the Cornwall colours here. Look, you've given me a task of trying to find something at Ipswich and I swerved the cup and, and went here. Uh, it's another pretty difficult race to decipher and it is um, it is quite a hard race, but it is coming out of a, a stronger race here. It did PR. I guess I, you know, it's drawn the outside gate. My data says there's actually no winners come from this gate, this trip before. So um, she's going to battle, but there's actually not a huge amount of speed here. I think Sir Warwick and Holyfield from two will kick up. But what you need to do with this girl is she's got a high cruising speed, and Malian just needs to give her a kick out of the gates and work hard for that first 800 and just try and find the fence. If she does that, I think she's a chance. Um, 
just get a couple of cheap furlongs, hopefully, and then kick kick off the bend. And um, I think she's a good chance at each way odds. She could get cast three wide after three hundred, and and she's gone. Uh, but I just sort of went with the with the view of she's coming out of stronger races, running behind Cardinal Gem and um, and a group race up in Brisbane. Um, I just think some of these are, are true blue benchmark horses more than half the field. Cepheus is coming back from two thousand. Gravina, fifteen starts on the dry, never won a race. Um, Irish songs I found, but it was thirty four into thirteen, so I don't really want to take thirteen. So I just thought, Lady of Honor. They get the tactics right. Winkers on, nose roll off, tongue tie off. Um, fiddling around with it a bit. If it can find the fence, uh, it would be a huge chance. Um, so that's the only better one I have each way on this. I spent like a good 15 minutes on it and was getting excited because I looked at prices and I'm like, this Cepheus, this will be 30, 40 to 1. <laughs> blinkers, blinkers on, back in trip from 2000. It's Look never one short it. of 1500 in its life. $6. I'm like, oh, my God. It's a dead set midweek race, isn't it? Like, oh, my God. Anyway, yeah, see if, so if Cepheus gets out to 40s, I'd have something on it. I thought the horse ready to win was Blazer Trail. Back to 54 kilos. Looks just a setup jobby from the Marius yard and ran on really well when it was pretty hard to the day at uh, the Rockhampton, the Archer, the big pop-up race up there. And then at, um, I thought he fought on a ride against Antino, which looks to be okay form for this. And now he's only 54 kilos. Jake Bayless, Barry 3. What price would Antino be on the backup? It'd be dead set 6 to 4 tops. Yeah, so, so I was happy to just... Steam into the favourite here. Just it's short enough for that sort of horse, I agree, but it's just it sticks out a little bit, doesn't it? And dry track, dry tracker, draw. yeah, dry tracker. So I thought it was the one, but um, I don't know if Nico or anyone else down in Melbourne's bothered, given it's a Queensland racing show. Yeah, I had a look. I thought Blazer Trail as well. Dead set dry tracker. If you just isolate his dry track form, it's actually pretty solid. So uh, that's what I'd be doing with him. He cannot go on the wet at all. So down in the weights, would have loved a different rider, but. Would have loved Mark Zara to stay on. That would be great. Hard to muck it up from that gate. I yeah, but he does the, draw it's off. The, it's the obvious. It's always scary to say that, but it's hard to muck it up from that gate. I tell you what, there's not many good riders uh, left up there. On it's the amazing how quick they jump ship. I tell you what, it looks like a bloody <laughs> country, provincial, bloody Gold Coast on a Saturday type jobby. Straight back to Rose Hill. Yeah, the potato people, as, as we'll call them. Any shares left in that horse, as, or is it no, nothing for the boys? Nah, Freddy's took 30 and um, just made a few calls and. Um, yeah, no, got a, got just a few, made a few calls. Got a few mates. <laughs> in, got a few mates into it. We we uh, got a <laughs> just, done, just so made a few. Have some luck. No, nothing for us. Made a couple of calls. <sighs> no, for, we called our friends. Not no, none of us. Yeah, hang well, on, checking the phone. No, no missed calls. Yep. Mm. It's all right. Isn't that amazing? You tip him an eighty to one winner, or and then one. he's got and some group one winner out of there and left no, us out. Mm. Mm. So you're on the same. I think I would have got something for nothing. Really, really, at the end of the day, he would have gone. <laughs> He's 80%. The last three horses I've had have died before they've even had a jump out. You don't want to be getting into horses, mate. <laughs> at least this one's had a jump out. This one's had a race. This one's had a race. <laughs> have you any shares in the wiener? Did you buy that weanling, Nico? No, we just we just had a look. So uh, we'll just see what comes to uh, comes to us in the next few months as well. But we're just um, seeing what the market's like at the moment, really. So nothing really doing there at the moment. Well, Wald, if you want to get into this horse, Friedman's selling 30. Just ring your mate Brad. Ring your mate Brad. He's selling it to his database. So get involved. <laughs> He's probably only sending it to his friends too, so I won't get a start there. Is <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> hey, you got that much cash after last weekend, honestly. Oh, oh. I butchered oh. it, but that's all right. <laughs> Next. Oh, all right. Knock bars, the, uh, the one that we've got to look at uh, Geelong race two. And uh, well, I'll have to put my Don King slash Dan White hat on and try and get these two blokes in a bit of a. Uh, a punching match for, uh, for charity. Who do you, who do you think would win? Oh, I want a I want a punting punching match. I don't want a punching match. Nah. The bet off. Yeah. Bet off. Oh, well. Unless unless DK dressed up as the bloke from Fat Pizza with the with the <laughs> chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> you know that? Oh, and then he then he chased Fat Paul Paulie down the street. That'd be all right. That'd be all right. <laughs> That'd be all right. More you bet, more you win, boys. See you later. That uh, that segment merely went for the. For the entire uh, allotment of the show, so <laughs> let's uh, move straight into Flemington. Uh, I don't think there's much. Uh, I'll, I'll save time at Roseville. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, no, you only tip on one race anymore, so I'd rather you just tip one winner. I think it's better for everyone. Chuck it in your multi and just launch into everything else. Flemington race four is the uh, the race that Nico likes here, and it's eleven hundred meter race. And you got Sai the favourite for Carleen and Peter Moody two dollars twenty favourite. I am Ben A five fifty pole and six fifty Zach de Boss. Seven General Bow, eight eight dollars Pioneer River, Bright Diamond fifteen and thirty four Demon Blood Pioneer River Pioneer River first up Seymour 
Eustace, uh, Linda Meach on board here. This is a repo we're going to have a look at. Linda Sticks, tell us why you like it. Yeah, he's in the red and white, kind of behind Nazwari, come out around second. Uh, Zach DeBoss is also in this race with the blaze and yellow cap back towards the inside. I thought you could probably make a, a case that Zach DeBoss shouldn't really won this race and uh, Pioneer River in the red and white sort of flashes home late um, and runs the quickest last 200 of the event. Pioneer River keeps Linda, uh, drops in the weight and does get the blinkers on. Um, so when the Ma used to sort of get the blinkers on, they're pretty deadly. So uh, I think he had him off first up and they've just chucked him straight back on. <clears throat> so um, he showed signs of life there. He hasn't won for a while, but he back in his day, he was a very good sort of straight track Flemington horse, blinkers back on. He jumped out really well leading to this prep and he's got an okay second up record. So... I thought in a race it was a bit up for grabs, um, right draw, sort of down in the weight. I thought he was a, a horse that was easy enough to back at around $8. I was surprised Zach DeBoss wasn't shorter, given how unlucky he was last start in this this sort of series. Last year, he absolutely tore it up. He was the, the horse to beat nearly every race. So he's had a bit of an un, in, a bit of a uh, interrupted prep since then, and sort of the spring didn't go his way, and that first up run wasn't ideal, given he didn't get a lot of luck late. But I thought it was sort of 8 bucks and $7 you could – probably back both of them to beat Sai, who she's progressive. I don't think she's any sort of superstar and she looks short enough at 220 um, and given she gets in at the same weight as those two. So I thought at sevens and eights, Piney River and Zach DeBoss might be uh, something worth having a look at to beat the favourite there. But um, yeah, probably more keen on Piney River with the blinkers back on. Looks perfect. Looks a great setup. Love that. Love that bet, Nico. I think it's uh, especially at the price point looks looks sensational. Oh, I reckon the, 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 the right angle here is to take on Sai for sure. I mean, that's why it's good. I think I think they're more than worth a look, Nico. I think they're good plays. I mean, Cy, the other day, everyone was creaming themselves about it. Like, a, a dead set beat, beat 100 to 1 chances, and there was three links first to, like, 11th. Like, you know, how's, how's, and that was in the, a restricted $80,000 race on the Saturday, the Benchmark 70, where, where Pioneer River and that come out of the $150,000 Benchmark 90. Like, just... Just looks if old fashioned form wise. I mean, two well, you can, you can tie it in too. Nazwari ran in that race that Piney River and Zach de Boss were in. He's come out and run second at Soundown in the same race that Sam's Image is in, who ran second to Sai. Nazwari won second in that race. Sam's Image ran like fifth, yeah. beaten two, two, two lengths by yeah. um, oh, Nazwari. So well, you can tie it in that way as well. Yeah, no, I reckon it's a great angle to take on Sai. I reckon it's, it's a really good one to take on there, and um, they look the two for, for Chips me. in. Absolute chips in job. Love that price, $8. Uh, Flemington Race 8 is the next one we're going to have a look at here. Uh, Euphorics, the favourite, 360. Art Zeno, 440, first immortal. $8, my brother's keeper, 950. Hard to cross 14. Got to be saving 15. So sleek, $17, $18. Bitcoin, 80 grand, 20. And Distrustful Award, $21. Much better the rest. The horse that we're going to have a look at here is Bitcoin, Nico. Yeah, just uh, working his way to the outside there. D. Oliver aboard in the yellow. This was a real slog. Uh, heavy 10 surface at Ballarat. The leader went out 12 lengths above to the 600, so they've really sort of ramped it up. Um, I think especially from about the 1,000, the, the speed really into the, went into the race with main lass. He's just sort of chipped away here. He started $2.70 on this occasion. This was his second run in Australia. He's had two runs at 2,000 metres. He won a, a fast run main at Ballarat at the start prior. Then he runs in this race, a very fast run race. Um, I think given that, there's a big opportunity for him to settle closer in the run here. He drops from 60 and a half down to 55 and a half, gets Al Meach going aboard. Um, he was a horse who sort of settled on speed in his run over 2,000 metres plus in New Zealand where he was placed in a listed race and then obviously first up he sat on speed as well. So uh, I just thought he was a horse that sort of profiled well enough to run a bit of a race in these uh, three-year-old staying events, which I just – there's just not much in them. Um, we saw sort of a similar race three weeks ago at Flemington where Midnight Lady was coming out of Maidens and she ran second at 90 to 1. I just don't think there's that much between a lot of this provincial form and the metro form. Um, hard to cross was good the other day, but he rises big time in the weights. Still probably a fair enough price given that. Euphoric, we backed him last started at a mile. He had every possible chance. Don't know about him at 2,000. Art Zeno looks well enough found from the wide draw. So I just thought Bitcoin, if they run it along at a fast tempo, Meach on, um, he's you know, he's only had two starts here in Australia and he's done everything right, really. Um, he found the line well there, weight drop, 18s. Uh, it looked a big price for mine, so just hopefully they go quick and they run him into the ground and he's the best stayer because he, he could be that with a good platform out of the two real quick run races. Any thoughts there, DK, Bitcoin? Oh, I'm never going to knock anyone for having a ping at a 20 to 1 chance, Nico. So, look, I can see why you've found him. I sort of thought he might want further now but because uh, he's what he's had. He just... 
keeps spinning around at the 2000, doesn't he? Yeah, he probably he could, yeah. But as um, but like I said, you know, these, these races, not much between. I went there to look at oh, these three-year-old staying races. I sort of appealed to me, but, I, geez, I, I couldn't find a way. Couldn't find a way. So no surprise you found a way at sort of the, that 20 to 1 or 18 to 1, uh, $17 price point. So I, I didn't really have an opinion on the race. So I couldn't find anything there. I was kind of keen to follow out Zeno off his first up run. He does get rear and pin and 54 kilos. He'd probably be the horse I'd mark favourite, but... It probably would be at like 440, like the price he is now. And I don't know if I want to get involved much shorter, given you probably go back. But um, yeah, I just thought it was probably probably second or thirds up for grabs there. And Bitcoin just might be in the spot just to to snag a place at about five bucks. So that's probably the way I'll play. Just on the overall of the whole meeting, it was just because it's what, it was something to two, two weeks ago, was it? Yeah. And they're, they're all all those things that ran well and coming there, all like, you know, Shayla and a lot of horses that ran well in one of that meeting all turn up again this week. So it's like, it's a lot of, you know, comparing. You can line stuff yeah, up and King King Magnus, King Magnus, yeah, uh, but, Jimmy the Bear, yeah, heap, heap of them are all, all savage there, all in again. So um, yeah, Cy Pioneer River, they're all out that same race, and yeah. then uh, Diagula hopefully out of the same race and early yeah. got to party, who's um, party. Oh, very well spruced in the fourteen hundred meter two yard race. So uh, that'll yeah. be an intriguing watch. I uh, I had Art Zeno, uh yeah, it's an interesting one. He's obviously had a few issues, so it's scary when uh, they've had a couple of issues and you're trying to dive into the short odds there, but he looks like he's ready to run a big race. If you want more Nico stuff, make sure you check out his Manning Yard Mail via Telegram or you can jump into Little Birdie Syndicate. Uh, we've had a, yeah, we've had a bit of a tough run of outs for the last sort of week or so, but um, we're still sort of hovering somewhere around the 50 units uh, profit for the year to date. So still going well, uh, still betting. And uh, I think we caught one yesterday, had one bit yesterday. Of course, it gets blouse run second. So we're uh, around the mark, but uh, we're keeping on trying. Speaking of trying, uh, puntingform.com.au, if you want to try your hand at deep diving into the form, make sure you check their database out. It is so easy. Someone like me can use it. Uh, it's been a game changer for me, and you can spread yourself across heaps of different tracks and uh, take lots of shortcuts with doing the form. So make sure you check out puntingform.com.au. Walt, one bet wonder. Rose Hill. Looks like uh, the weather's clear. I think the only place that has bad weather is Adelaide. I think they're going to get a bit of a dump on Saturday. That means nothing to us. We don't have to care about Adelaide for like another 11 months, mate. What are you well, talking about? Good thing there, though. they got some of the POC tax back, so they're going to invest more money back in the what industry. Are they going to grow some flowers? No, good on them. What are they going to do? They're trying. Um, everything's trying. Uh, Rose Hill, race seven. Try, what is it? Let so, me talk for a bit. Mikel Cup, that's the feature race. Talk about the track, mate. Uh, that's all right. Zoom on's a favourite here. Three dollars forty. Voice Yard John is four twenty. Bold Mac five fifty. Steely seven dollars. Lord Ardmore nine fifty. Benno thirteen dollars. Big Bad Benno. What's he doing at this time of the year? SD Fenny fourteen dollars. And you can get better the rest. I see Le Regal Lions a dual nominator. So I'd be interested to see which way it goes. How's the track going to play, Walt? Rose Hill. Where's the four dollars gone? Zoom on that was there an hour and a half ago. What's going on here? It's, it's been three forty. It's, it's, it's was been three forty all morning. Oh, there's a good scratching. The, the Max must Schnell be going to Ipswich and Desert, Desert Icon. Icon. Desert Icon's a good scratching, so I actually don't mind that. Uh, back to the true should be fine. Should just be a pretty fair track. They'll get four or five off in the straight. I just hope it does um, <laughs> hold up the weather because <laughs> it seems that uh, <laughs> if someone does a whiz on the tracks, it uh, <laughs> they're going from Go fives on. to nine. So. Uh, yeah, hopefully the, the the good weather holds it's up. Fine, sunny, sunny the whole time. It doesn't actually matter to the horse that uh, to the mighty zoom on. He he handles all conditions. Let's have a look at his replay. Yeah, so he sat Yellow. outside leader first up. I think this was eighteen hundred. Was it? I should know. Um, and they didn't go overly quick. Certainly had his chance. The winner does hold him, Max Schnell. But it was sort of much fitter and and uh, and he sort of just keeps coming. And I love it when they sort of have this outside leader run and and stick on. Uh, even if they sort of get fought off a bit, that usually holds up pretty well. But this bloke sort of trying right to the line. Desert Icon comes out, which is only um, gives him more control. Timmy from the wide draw. Oh, Timmy. From the wide draw. I think there's only wild chaps drawn outside it. Um, so they should just cruise across Loves together. It, doesn't he? He does. And um, Regan off. Yeah, wasn't going to mention on. that. Wasn't going to mention wide that. Wide draw. Wasn't going to mention that. Would love it for the mighty Kaboo, but um, didn't mention that either. <laughs> um, yeah, I just think it gets full control, obviously. Oh, no, nothing exciting kilos. from the price perspective, but the horses you sort of mentioned against it, the Benos, they're all horses that need plenty to go their way to, to sort of get a result, whereas at least you know this guy's going to be up on speed, stable. Uh, we're going extraordinarily well prior to probably last week, but still, you know, the horses are, are running very well for sure. Stretching out the 2,000 yeah, does, does Steely run 2,000? Well, it just runs up to them and, 
and it's, I don't think Randy's the sort of bloke who's going to coax him into a win. He was just home for your life there the other day, Steely, and he just seems to find one better. He's done it all over all sorts of different distances. He's a frustrating horse, but um, been a good horse to owners as well. Bold Max, dangerous, but by the argent, whatever, it's dangerous, but you know, at least you know where Timmy's going to be, and he, they're going to have to you know, sustain a run to, to run him down, I would imagine, especially if he gets full control. And he does have a little turn of foot when he – when he gets conditions to suit dry track control, he can put four on him around the bend and they really will have to to get out and, and chase him. Yeah, I think this is a great bet. You know, are you boys down in Melbourne, you bothered to have a look at Rosie Hill? or No, nah, not not really. Um, he's always been one of mine. I remember back to him at Flemington early days and he just that's sort of his go, isn't it? Just spin around up on top of the speed, doesn't have a big turn of foot or anything. He just wax away, but uh, you think down in the weights, that would definitely suit him against what looks like a bunch of numbers up there in Sydney. Don't even bother looking at the rest of the meeting. Anyway, at least last week we had some promising. It was actually a good meeting. Like Bjorn's horse, as, as much as it was good to see him train a few winners, um, might as well talk because I don't have another race. I'm going to think. That, those horses, Osmosis, Gay's horse, Royal, Royal Tribute, uh, Iona Merck for the Mighty Carly, and um, who did it beat? Kaboo. Some really progressive good horses, which is good to see this time of year. Keeps us alive because after the Brisbane Carnival, it gets pretty quiet. Yeah. Uh, apologies. I, I I just sort of forgot to get Carly on the show. I had the – yeah, I can dress up as Carly. Hey? Do you want me to do – I can come in the full Carly next <laughs> well, week. Well, we had, we had to film the golf podcast this morning and I just got totally wound up in the US Open golf, so I forgot I to ask why. Carly on the show. Mate. I don't know what she would have done on the show. I'd rather DK. dodge cars in the Pacific DK. Highway than try and find the winner of the US Open. You love pain more than me. Racingwatch.com.au is from uh, what Azza just gave the big spruik if you want to find hey, seven. Azza does such a better job than you of the spruik. Can, well, can we just clip that up and put it on every week, just get him screaming at everyone? That's awesome. Buy, buy, buy yeah, Racingwatch yeah, yeah, yeah. sub. Yeah, Steak you're crackers, masks, you're mad. <laughs> Azza, Azza isn't in the chat room, so that's another reason why you should. Why you I don't should. think he knows about it. I don't know if we want him in there. No, he could get a bit there. powerful. Don't want him in there. <laughs> Uh, but Telegram or Discord, so you've got two options. Lots of noise. We get both or well, one of the exactly. We get a few. Uh, Donnie's best. Let's uh, let's see what Donnie's done. Tannhauser T- Tan was uh, was okay last week, um, and he's got Ipswich. Hopefully, he's been in Ipswich this week. G'day, gents. Ipswich Cup Day on Saturday. If you want to see 20,000 drunk, bogan, most of them with two heads, get around the racetrack, head out there Saturday. It should be a cracking day. My best bet this weekend comes up in Rose Hill in the first. Two Tilt Love Vita at two dollars and five. It's pretty obvious. It was held up badly last start. Didn't get out to the final hundred and fifty and really ripped through the line, I think, stepping up in distance suits. Um, the middle draw suits and the rail and the true suits. Um, it's taken on a few horses with some dodgy Brisbane form. So happy to make that clearly the best bet of the day. Um, the best bet at Ipswich on Cup Day is race two, Beckford. It's about 20 to 1. It's changed stables, gone to Stephen Lee since its last run. It's a solid country highway horse that, from the low draw, should be able to bob up fresh. Both trials have been nice, so I think it's a, it's a chance to run in a, into the placings in what is a very weak race. The best bet is clearly race one, Rose Hill, two to Labrina. Good luck. Mm. Well, so Donnie's... Um just chiming into that unlucky horse that I think the yeah. world's seen. Although I hate the old PRs that are unlucky that I'm not sure was that unlucky. Like I think it would have won by neck. I don't know. Flying Trapeze got beat a nostril by Azula who started close enough to favourite in a group one a week later. Mogwai ran well in an open maiden. Um, yeah, not my cup of tea, but I'll be cheering it extremely hard. Hmm. Two to La Vida, Walla, K-Mac. K-Mac yeah. has been... He's back. Well, he's been to the Exorcist. He's been to the Drums Lady. I don't know what's going on there. He's taking off at the 600 when he should. He's bloody putting him in the race. He's sitting outside the leader on Waller first starters. He's just pulling everyone's pants down. Hmm. Maybe he's been foxing for six years. Could have been. Hmm. Race two, number six, is an interesting bet at Ipswich. Haven't had uh, a good good look through that, but I see Kelly Schwider, my good mate, has got the favourite there, Sailor Secret, with Benny Thompson, who's uh, Mr. Popular at the moment. And uh, Angela Jones is riding for Pat W. Webster. That on, ride wasn't that bad. On Rejoiced. That ride wasn't that bad. They just carry on. Even the kids riding the last wasn't that bad. I, t- I thought his ride on Yaffet was worse. Which, what was that? Oh, yeah, yeah. I did, yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. I, don't, I just don't know how you find so much traffic over a 32 When a horse dollar thirty, and he sort of got chopped at the start, and it's within a length of the lead, 300 to go. I just needed to run a place, Yaffet. Mm. That's all I ask. I don't ask for much. What are you even talking about? 
I've got no idea. Yeah, neither have I. Ipswich, look at that field. Holy cow. It's a shocker. Go, Donny. Go, Donny. $17. Top Sport Steamers. Phil last week. King Colorado. Write these down. They might drift, but they can still win. Flemington race seven, number four, Chief Al Tony. This is for you, Nico. This looks like a very, very competitive race. Yeah, probably just a bit too dry for him. I reckon we're going to be able close to a, a soft five on Saturday. He'd probably just want a real wet track, so I wouldn't be shocked if they even saved him for another day, but he's, his go will be when we get into the real bottomless tracks deep into the winter. Two or a couple of horses that go all right. It's Braden Starr's one of them. Jimmy the Bear goes all right. Unusual culture, looks suited as well. DK, your camp, how, much, how good this Braden Star if that, that, that mob's got it going? Oh, it's his time of year to train a few winners, isn't he? Yeah. He's got 300 horses <laughs> or something. He's allowed to train a few winners. Oh. I nearly tipped Jimmy the Bear on the show. I was just a bit bit worried he might peak fourth up with the, the rider going on there. I reckon they've got all eyes on the Winter Championship, so that was probably my only knock there. Pretty good read. Uh, Rose Hill race four, number two, man behind the money. Good win the other day. Jay Mack wrote it like uh, I'm not going to say how he wrote it. He wrote it very well. He was aggressive and it got home. It was I think it was unlucky in Brisbane to start four. That's a competitive race, actually. There's an interesting horse. In race race four two. Uh, oh, that's the Grabini race. Yeah, there's probably there, those two horses are, are certainly right on the up. Uh, Adjourn was really good the other day. Touristic uh, can improve. It's a competitive race. The next one here is uh, race eight, number nine, Masquerade or Masquerade. Three yeah, fifty so at six dollars. Uh, same camp. Wallet, not sure. McAvoy the, first up. Ten dollars was mystical. The ten dollars into five fifty within one and a half seconds for a first up. Waller is always a, a, an interesting move. France. And the French horse. Yeah, and and it's a field of very steady creatures. So it's a very nice race to kick off a very nice horse if it happens to be that. So what's it? It's had uh, how many starts? Unseen. Is it not trials? Six starts, one win over there. Unseen, oh. uh, and they do seem to be putting K Mac on the right ones at the moment with the with the J Mac away. Uh, Nashi will knock them all over if he has to to keep them out of the way, and uh, off off Karen will go. Hmm. Danger Will Robinson, I would have thought with uh, Masquerade, that could be the pick of him. And this is an interesting little bet in a pretty competitive race. Uh, Switch race six, number ten, and it's uh, Mumbai Jewel. So Annabelle. Trying to target this Ipswich meeting. you got Swiss Exile, Plundering, Count de Beans is pretty honest. Fashion legend, sort of in the abyss, that horse. Stroll comes here second up. Competitive little race. Impossible. Mm. Yeah, I think um, you know, I couldn't have a bet in that race. It's just too hard for me. Nico, anything there that jumps out at you? No, Mumbai Jewel's one of mine, but I haven't looked at the race. No. Same for me, but it's just it's never done what I thought it was going to do either. I thought it was sort of always hidden runs and just it's never come on. I'd, I'd need free bets and and Ned's toolbox. Oh, the uh, toolbox and a burner phone for, for to have to <laughs> the have a burner phone and the odds boost and the and the what's the what the surge? I like the surge. Anyway, so that's uh, that's that's our probably most controversial show. So if it uh, gets banned off YouTube, you know, it's only Azza though. What? We can all blame it on Azza, can't we? Yeah, the, the rest of us are in line. Oh, D- yeah, DK. We're pretty, we're pretty we DK. DK revved him DK up. Got, he did. <laughs> he did too. <laughs> I think that's what he was doing mostly, just revving him up. Yeah. I think he, I think it worked. Yeah, <laughs> I think he got it the job done. Oh, well, <laughs> hope we, hopefully we found you a couple of winners, guys. Looks like a, uh, a tricky card at Ipswich. Should be happy hunting at uh, Flemington, and uh, Walt's found an absolute beauty. And fingers crossed the uh, the bookies start to, uh, or the PRA start to pull the bookies' socks up because there's just too many grubs uh, in the game. And it's just, I think it's just painting, putting racing into a bad light and putting racing into disrepute. So. I think they need to make sure they get onto that, nip that in the bud because top sport, none of those tricks at top sport, they don't, they don't play those silly games. So make sure you're betting at top sport and piss the rest off. Mm. Okay. All right, that's the end of the show. We'll, uh, we've been going for four hours. We'll see you next week.